Hello, uh, welcome back. My previous video I mentioned I was wearing the same clothes. <laughs> Sorry, having a moment. Uh, yeah, if you watched my last video, you would have known that I said I was wearing the same clothes. My hair is exactly the same because I was filming the next video immediately after that one. And this is Q&A 3. Basically, I couldn't wait to do it next week because I got, you know, borrowing this phone now that I'm filming off. And this goes away next week, so I'm screwed until my laptop comes back. Uh, yeah, so episode 3, Q&A, uh, series 1. Series 1 is going to contain 10 videos, and then series 2 is going to contain 10 videos, and then I'm going to do it like that, because then it gives me a break to film more stuff to put on during the week of non-filming for the Q&As. Um, there's three questions in this video, not five as normal. Uh, the, the rest of the questions that I've come across are actually shorter answers than what I thought they were going to be. So there's going to be about seven questions in the next video. Uh, Q&A five, and I'll explain that in a minute. I'm going to skip one. Uh, yeah, so Q&A four is going to be dedicated to Yorin, or Yorin, Bowden. Um, I can't remember how I pronounced it last time. Yes, his, I've dedicated his video to the Q&A four to him because I've got like five or six, five or six questions of his that I want to answer personally to him. Because it's, you know, a pointless answer in one question here and then another question in the other video and he's got to find them out in other, it's pointless. So I'm going to do that and in series, episode 5, like I said, it will be after his fourth. Um, and if you're interested in asking more than one question, then just shoot me, uh, Facebook me, you know, websites are, my website's hitting up quite well. Um, YouTube's just started, so it's got commenting below, subscribe to my videos and then you'll see my occasional videos that I'm going to come up with later on. Um... After I've answered these three questions, going to be another video. The other video is going to be explaining my next video, um, basically quite in depth. My history videos and things that are going to come back uh, in a couple of weeks, so I'll be filming them very soon. So be patient. Okay, um, first question comes from Darren and Brigand, alright? Now, he's 14, and he wants to know if he should have dreadlocks, and what would his parents think, and will he get kicked out of school? He also gave me your contact details, and if you're watching this, um, you're, you're watching my video and me answer your question, then I, I've deleted your contact details, I've not kept them because it looks, I can't keep a 14 year old kid's contact details. And he wants me to do his dreadlocks for him. Um, if you're interested in me having done your locks, please ask any parents to get them because obviously you're only 14. And if they agree to it and you want me to do them, then that's cool. Con get them to contact me through a phone, my numbers on my website and my Facebook page, which I believe you visited. Um, or you can contact me through Facebook, either one. Right, so you, you asked if you should have dreads. Um, firstly, you have to convince your parents that they're not dirty, alright? And you've got to convince them that they're okay to have and they're not dirty, they don't smell, they're easy to upkeep, they're cheap, you know, I don't charge a lot, and even if you wanted to, you can do it yourself. Um, but obviously you're 14 and it could be quite difficult to get the method right. Um, but yeah, mostly convincing your parents they're not dirty, because the outlook on these Older people who are very inexperienced in that kind of thing just, you know, they don't want to know. They're just like, oh, dirty, no, dirty, oh, no, society is horrible, and that community is disgusting. But yeah, convince them it's not dirty, give them loads of research and throw it at them. Just go, yeah, read that and bloody agree for them, you have them. Um, secondly, school. Uh, schools in the UK have got a very strict policy on dreadlocks and funny hairstyles because they look, they do look. You know, they look quite rough and ragged and what have you to start with, but time goes on, they do mature quite well and round off quite nicely, and they do look quite presentable, actually. I know a couple of people who work in the business side of it, and they've got really tidy dreadlocks, and they can look very, very professional. Uh, but that's it, mostly convincing your school parents that it's fine. Um, you may want to convince your parents first, and then go to school and ask them, and if they disagree, then ask your parents to talk to the school. It's easier that way. It gets the parent, it gets the school realizing that the parents have done a little research and find out they're not dirty and what have you. It's a very clever way of doing it. But in the end, they might just turn around and say no. So you may have to wait until you're 16, 17. But it's not. It's not a problem. You let your hair grow. You have longer dreadlocks. It's all good. Yes. Thanks for that. Contact me if you're still interested in them. If your parents agree to let you have them, then just contact me through there. And thank you very much for your question. Now this pronunciation is very annoying, the next question. Uh, it's Diarvid. Now, D-I-A-R-V-I-D. 
I pronounce that as Diavit or Diavit um, or whatever. You'll figure it out if you're watching. It's Diavit Fremantle and you're from Pondicherry and I believe that's in India or the outskirts of India somewhere. I'm not sure, but you're, you're there. You know that, you live there. And you've asked, you have very African type hair that grows like an afro. Now, when you say afro, I'm assuming you mean boom, you know, straight out. Um, you also said it's very thick and extremely knotty. Now, best method for your hair is twist and rip, I feel, because when you section your hair off normally for dreadlocks, you back comb, when you back comb, if you use the back comb method, when you back comb, you get this knotted, compressed part here, and it feels hard and firm, all right? Now, with your hair, it's easy to get confused with back combed and knotted. Because when you back home an afro, or I'm assuming when you back home an afro, I've never seen it, I've never done it. I'm looking forward to it, you wonder. Um, it can feel firm, but your hair always feels firm because you've got an afro type hair. Um, so when back home in it, you're going to feel that firmness and then you're going to crochet and think it's shredded. And then eventually it's all going to loosen up and it's going to loosen out and it's going to become frayed. Best way to do it is twist and rip. I know it sounds nasty to hear, but it's exactly the same as back home, but it's just a different kind of concept really, I suppose. I've done it a couple of times and it works on very thick hair. And so take a read on that, look on that, and I'm going to do a video on that later, but if you're interested in watching some videos, I recommend <sighs> Sylviaville. Now, I believe it's Sylviaville. I've watched her for a while and she's got, she had these really white dreadlocks. Some of them were synthetic, you know, and the, her hair was like this long. She had synthetic ones and they were definitely beautiful. Sylvia Bill, she's subscribed to Newton Faulkner, so look up on Newton Faulkner's subscribers, you'll see her on there. Um, look her up, she's got some twist and rip videos on there, she's very good, I recommend her. That's the best way to do it, because you can feel it knotting, you know, so you can feel it tightening up. And obviously crochet like normal if you want to, blunt the tips, don't blunt the tips and tie up to you. Yeah, so that's, that's what I recommend. Uh, thank you for my help, yeah? Thank you for your question. So that's it. Alright, I hope that helps. Uh, Carrie from Southville. I'm assuming it's Bristol. I know, only know one Southville, and that's Bristol. Um, Carrie, you're 28. No thanks for your age, it's great. Um, your dreads aren't holding shape, and you've had them for three years. Now, you said they're mostly flat um, <coughs> and fraying at the ends. And by fraying, I'm assuming you mean this. Like it's, you know. Fluffy and uh, ah, scaggly. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and you said, what have you done wrong and how can you solve it? Now, flat dreads aren't something you've done wrong. They're something you've not done at all. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it, like, you're supposed to palm roll. If you want rounded dreadlocks and decent uniform written, you've got a palm roll. Otherwise, you are going to sleep on them, they're going to compress, you're going to wear a hat, they're going to compress, you're going to win the shower, you're going to wash them, they're going to compress if you don't try them properly. So you are going to have flat dreads. Um, best way to solve it, I'd say within like, you could probably solve it in two months of doing it. When you wash your hair normally, um, wash it normally like you do in the shower, but take all your dreads when you're washing them and rub all together. All right, and obviously squeeze like you normally do, but rub them really viciously. Like proper get in there and rub like that, like a palm roll and normal dread. <coughs> That's the washing process. Now, when you're drying your dreads, do exactly the same thing with a towel. And the friction on the towel is going to make them all come together and bind. All right, so when you palm roll them with the towel, it's going to make them all clump up nicely and roll together. You know, like, I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, yeah, and then palm roll whilst they're wet, each dreadlock. Now, you should only do it, like, for 30 seconds or so. Just roll like you would, you know. Do this one. Do this for you. Palm roll. Down the dread. Now... Not too hard, not too, you're not going to cause any pulling on your scalp, but just enough that you can feel it thumping in your hand, you know, because it will go all the way down the dreadlock. Eventually, in the last next couple of months, you'll see it rounding off. What you want to do is be compressing the dread into a circular shape. Right? The cylindrical shape that normal dreadlocks have doesn't just come out of nowhere. <coughs> so that's what you need to do. All right. Um, the frayed ends, <coughs> to be honest with you, if you want them blunted up, back home, crochet, get the crochet up inside the dread and pull it in. I'm going to do a maintenance session next week, so watch that if you want to and just see how I'm going to be doing that. 
<coughs> well, not maintenance. <coughs> I've got a chesty fucking cough. It's not a maintenance session, really. It's more of a um, sort of maintenance video, just to show you how to do certain things. I'm not actually maintaining my dreads anymore, except washing. Obviously, I'm dirty. Um, <coughs> that's it. Basically, next day, palm roll as well. Um, so once you palm roll on the wet dreads, well, damp dreads, palm roll the next day as well, because then it'll make them all. You're gonna get that extra work on them, and it does help a lot. Um, crocheting helps slightly, but I wouldn't do it too much because what you're going to do is cause hair to fray out because they're quite flat. You're not going to make them rounded. You're going to pull reds that are going to pull hair that's going to make a knot and make a link because then it's going to look like here's your dread and it's going to look like that. It's going to make a kink. And I've had that happen a lot to a couple of people that I've done dreads for and I've had to fix it for them and it's a bitch to fix some lumps and kinks, but they do happen. And it's enjoyable. I've got a few. I'm not going to show you them now. I'll show you them next week because this is long. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah. Hope that helped. This is, a, like I said, it's 11 minutes now. There's a three questions that were in depth slightly compared to my other questions that I asked, that I answered. So yeah, <coughs> thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. I'm not really bothered about the thumbs down, so just carry on. Uh, comment if you have any questions for the next um, q and five. I've got to be quick and run out of time. Uh, yeah, so this video is going to end quickly because I just got cut off and I got to combine these two videos together. Um, yeah, like I said, remember, wash your dreads, palm roll the next day after you've palm rolled the, the wet, the damp dreads, helps them round off much easier. Um, and it gives them dreads time to settle when they're wet and you've done all that palm roll and work on it, it gives them time to settle in and do all that jazz. And then the next day, palm roll, and then probably the week, obviously, you're going to wash them again. But keep doing that every, your wa every washing session. Thanks very much, I was explaining thumbs up and all that jazz, and, and yeah, so you'll see that. Comment below if you have any questions, question uh, Q&A 5, question Q&A 4 is dedicated to Yarin Bowden, again, pronunciation terrible, but hey. <coughs> yeah, so leave your comments, uh, inbox me on Facebook, Gmail me, whatever, I'll link all that below later anyway. So thanks for your time for watching this, and I appreciate, you know, it's a long video, I appreciate you sitting there watching it for that long. And I'll be seeing you all next week. See you later, peeps. Peace and love, guys.